Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. Today, I have a lovely hot cup of coffee in my Homer Simpson mug. Mmm. And the reason for this is that we are going to be playing with this, which is a Stirling engine. Now, this particular example is probably nearly, gosh, let's say 10 years old for argument's sake. So it's about that. Um, and you can see it has a pattern now of age on it. It's not quite as shiny. The brass isn't quite as shiny as it was when it was uh, brand new because of all my grubby, oily, acidic fingerprints on it. But you can see it's a very nice thing. And for those of you that don't know, a Stirling engine is a very high efficiency engine and it runs on heat. And this is the first time I've tried to start this in probably a couple of years, so let's see. So what's happening here, I'm hoping my cough, there we go, it's thinking about it, thinking about it, not quite. What I'm hoping is that the heat from the coffee cup is going to heat this lower plate that'll, and that will cause a differential in temperature between this lower plate and this upper plate. So if I hold it up this way you can see inside there's a big foam uh, displacer and what this does, this acts as an insulator, this big here, this blue foam insulator. And at the top here you see a graphite piston. And this is effectively your piston that's providing your power stroke in your engine. It's going up to here, it's got a crank on the end. Uh, and at the back uh, there's a, another linkage going down to this blue insulator. Okay. So what effectively is happening is the insulator is acting a bit like a valve in a normal traditional engine. So when it's down, it's actually insulating the air inside the uh, cavity against the heat coming up. Okay, and as you can imagine, these insulations uh, on the hot and the cold side of the plate cause the air inside to expand and contract in various ways, and this causes uh, a pressure on this um, this cylinder here, this graphite cylinder, which in turn moves the crank. Now, I have not yet managed to get this to start. Now, let's. I'm getting a little bit worried. Maybe I've broken it. So. Perhaps I'm just not turning it in the right engine. Let's see if we can give it a second. Okay. It looks like it's going. Perhaps after all these years it needed a bit of choke. Um, what can happen, um, this was very dusty. So what I suspect is a lot of dust got into this um, cylinder here possibly into the bearings, but mainly into the cylinder, and that's that's caused a bit of um, friction in there that's prevented it uh, from running for a very long time, for, for a reasonable amount of time. And let me, um, it's hard to explain really how finely tuned this is. It can only really work, operate, it's operating on very little energy, just the heat differential from a coffee cup. Um, and what you can't see is inside all of these parts are some very fine small bearings um, that really keep this imbalanced. Now if I were to try to add up the number of hours this has been running since I've purchased it, it, would, it must be thousands and thousands of hours. You can put this on uh, something like uh, if you've got a laptop on your desk and you're using a bench power supply, you can just keep it on top of the uh, power supply and um, that's normally enough heat just to keep this going. The, the warmer the uh, heat source, the faster this will go. There is a limit. I can't remember what the uh, manufacturer uh, said. Certainly you don't want to start melting things. This is, just to give you the make, this is a Contax unit. You can go on their website. It's a UK web um, a UK company that has a web presence and, and you can purchase these online. I purchased this as a kit and I think a kit is the uh, best way of buying this. It's it's really a lot of fun to assemble. I think you can do it in under an hour. Um, 
you learn a lot about how this works, how it's assembled. It gives you a bit more appreciation of the mechanics behind it. Um, and I think this is something that you'll have a lot of uh, joy with for many years. You can just leave this on top of your uh, monitor or laser printer or something in the corner and it'll just keep whirring away there in the background. Um, um, I should think indefinitely really. I don't know how long they last. I have not contacted the manufacturer to see um, if there's some sort of uh, lifespan on these bearings but uh, I should think it will be years and years and years. I'm just going to hold this up to the uh, microphone just so to see if you can hear the noise it makes because it's a very pleasant little clicking sound. No, nope, maybe not. I don't know. It's uh, just like a quiet little train. Um, so there you go, a uh, contact Sterling engine. And uh, if you're interested, Wikipedia up uh, some Sterling engines and uh, have a look at how they work. They're fascinating. Uh, apparently some big ships use them, so they are in use. Thanks for watching.